Hello, my name is Jeff Smits. This is a presentation on incremental compilers with internal build systems, which is work done in collaboration with Gabriel Cornat and Oko Visser. The initial problem that might motivate someone to look into an incremental compiler is that the current compiler is becoming rather slow for relatively large software projects. The goal of an incremental compiler is to make compilation speed proportional to the size of the change that was made since the project was last compiled, independent of the size of the project. However, if the interest for an incremental compiler only comes up now with larger projects, there are usually a number of problems. Incremental compilation is influenced by language features. When the language is designed from the start to be incrementally compilable, this is not a problem. But when incremental compilation is tried as an afterthought, there are usually problems with supporting incremental compilation. Apart from the language, the existing compiler was also not designed to be incremental, which is where the initial problem comes from. So adapting that compiler to become incremental can seem close to impossible. But it would also be terribly expensive to build an entirely new compiler that is built to be incremental and reach feature parity with the original compiler. This is all without even considering the problems that can come up if you were to write your own incremental system. Our contribution is a case study of an economical solution to this problem. We decided to rework the existing compiler to be incremental. We put a new spin on the idea of separate compilation by leveraging an incremental build system inside our compiler. Our programming language of choice has particular cross-module language features that seem impossible to compile incrementally at first, which makes it a critical case to demonstrate our approach. The language in question is Stratego. Stratego is a term rewriting language with programmable strategies for applying rewrite rules. These strategies can be programmed with generic traversal primitives. The language is dynamically typed and is used in practice in the Stratego XT transformation toolkit and the SpoofX language workbench. Through SpoofX, Stratego is used at Oracle Labs, Canon, and is one of the technologies backing the conference website of programming. Since writing and publishing our paper, Stratego has gained a gradual type system. The slides of this presentation incorporate the work we did recently to integrate the type system into the incremental compiler. Stratego is mainly used for transformations on abstract syntax trees. The language has some features that allow you to easily extend definitions in other modules, which gives an interesting style of project development. I'll give a small example here. We start with a tiny core language that contains statements, expressions, function calls, and void type. The statements and expressions allow for variable assignment and reference, and we'll add some extensions to this language separately, which may or may not reference each other. To support those language extensions easily, we will set up some definitions of a desugaring using the innermost strategy to apply the capital desugar rules, of which none are defined for the core language. Now we add integers to the language in the form of literals, a number of operations on these integers, and an integer type. We can add a separate module in Stratego that imports the core desugaring module and simply adds new definitions of the capital desugar rules. These contributions will be merged during compilation as long as we import our desugar int module from the main module uh, when we compile. Desugaring is in this case to rewrite specific abstract syntax for integer operations to function calls. Let's add another extension to the language. In this case, we'll add some control flow statements. Again, we import the desugar core module to extend the capital desugar rules with two new rules. One to desugar a for loop to a while loop and the other to desugar an if then to an if then else with an empty else. These extensions can both be imported and their contributions to the capital de sugar rules will be merged by the compiler. You have now seen the main problem with incrementally compiling Stratego. There can be multiple definitions of rules and strategies with the same name. These can exist in different modules, and yet they are all considered contributions to the same entity and must be found and merged at compile time. This means that to compile a strategy or rule, 
we need global information of the entire compilation unit to make sure we find all contributions. Due to other features in Stratego, making a new compiler would be a large undertaking. So let's look at the original Stratego compiler to see if we can adapt something. Here's a simple compilation scenario drawn out. On the left we have the main Stratego file M, which imports K, the file below. M is the sole definer of the strategy S1 and one of the contributors of an S2 definition. K also defines S2 and defines S3. The dashed green arrows are an extra reminder that the two definitions of S2 will result in a single definition in the output. The compiler consists of a front end and a back end and can output an intermediate representation in the middle. During its front end work, it finds all files from the main file, reads in all definitions, checks the references resolve and combines definitions. The backend is responsible for generating code for each definition and pulling out some things that to be shared in the main and interop register files. The approach we would like to use to make the compiler incremental is through the use of an incremental build system and separate compilation. The simplest way to do this is through dynamic linking which has already been done in the case study for an incremental build system by Aertweg, Lichter and Weil. In their case study, they removed the import resolution and static checking of name resolution in an adaptation of the original compiler. This allows each file to be compiled separately, but results in duplicates, in this case S2. They handle this by writing a new runtime in which the generated files would register and an interaction in strategy and rule calls would resolve through the runtime. The runtime can then dynamically do linking and merge multiple definitions from different modules. Since it was a case study for the build system, they did not report on the overhead of, of the extra interaction in calls in Stratego, nor the work required to re-establish static name resolution checks. The output of the adapted compiler was not backward compatible with the original runtime and therefore impossible to integrate into the Stratego tooling that is in use. In our work, we used the successor of the build system by Erdweg et al. and decided to really put it inside the compiler. The plan for our compiler is to do part of the compilation work on a per file basis and then switch to working on a per name basis. We can accurately track dependencies between incremental tasks in the build system because we can register them dynamically. Let's look at the same example files again. One entry point to the compiler is now to do static checking for a project for use in an IDE. In this case, the result would be a success and perhaps some messages with warnings. To be able to check the project, we need a list of modules in the project so we can check each one. For this we depend on the module list part of the result of the resolve task. The resolve task has more information in its output, but we can tell the build system that we only need this part. The resolve task starts with the main module and runs the front task for that module. A front task finally accesses the file, parses it, and extract some relevant information from it. The resolve task specifically asks for the imports and the list of definitions. Resolve needs the imports to start other front tasks such as the one for K. The list of definitions will become relevant later. Now that resolve has finished computing, the module list can be passed to check and check can start a check module task for each module. The check module task for M uses the AST of the module, the imports, the definitions, and the references. It uses the imports and references to depend on the front tasks of the imported modules, but only specifically requires the information of the definition in the imported modules that are referenced. The check module task for K is simpler because there are no imports to follow. The actual checks inside check module are done by code from the gradual type system for Stratego. The actual checks inside 
check module are done by code from the new gradual type system for Stratego. The second entry point for the compiler is actually compiling the project. This is done with the compile task. This task needs to see first if the static checks did not fail, for which it depends on, uh, on the check task. Then it needs a list of all definitions, not modules, as we will now process by definition instead of by module. This is the first reason why Resolve collects the definitions of all front tasks. The first back task is for strategy S1. The back task depends on the Resolve task result to find all modules that define strategy S1. This is the second reason why Resolve needs definitions uh, from all front tasks. As you can see, we use Resolve to contain all global information necessary for compilation. Module M defines S1, and so back requires the AST of S1 uh, from the check module task for module M and proceeds to call the sugaring and code generation from the original compiler to do its job. The back tasks for S2 and S3 follow the same logic, where of course the task for S2 uh, asks for the AST from both modules. These are then combined before running the desugaring and code generation of the original compiler, which takes care of merging the definitions. Finally, we need to generate the two shared files, which requires a list of all definitions that were compiled. That is, among other things, because despite how intricate this diagram now looks, I've skipped a lot of details here. The point of showing you this much detail is to note how dynamically defining dependencies between incremental tasks is what makes this, this compiler design possible. The filters on the results of tasks allows the incremental build system to be as incremental as we want to make it. In this example, a change to the definition of S1 in module M will force the recomputation of its front task, but not that, not that of the resolve task. The resolve task holds some combined global information so it's important that it doesn't recompute unless it really needs to. Check module for M does need to recompute, of course, since it depends on the entire AST of M. The back task of S1 uh, also needs to recompute since it depends on the AST of S1, but those are all the recomputations required in, in such a case, which is three tasks out of 11. In the paper, you can also find a benchmark that we ran to see how our incremental compiler does, which I will show briefly. We picked one of our largest Stratego projects, a compiler for the web diesel language. This project has over 27,000 lines of Stratego code across 400 files with over 10,000 distinct named strategies. We took the latest 200 commits of version control history at the time of writing the paper. This is a box plot of the time the original compiler spent on compiling the web diesel project over those 200 commits. Around one and a half minutes for even the smallest change. This is a plot of the benchmark results with our incremental compiler. These are ordered by the number of files changed and then by time. This mostly shows that the amount of changed files correlates somewhat with the amount of work uh, the compiler has to do, but it's not a great indicator. While the clean build with the incremental compiler was slower than the original compiler, most incremental compilations took under 10 seconds. To conclude, I've presented an incremental compiler for a critical case, Certigo, for which the incremental compilation was non-obvious. We were able to reuse most of the original whole program compiler. The output of our incremental compiler is backward compatible, making it a drop-in replacement. We did this by creating separate incremental processing tasks around different compiler pieces. With an incremental build system used internally, we were able to wire these tasks together and get an incremental compiler. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you at the Programming 2021 conference.